Pipeline Avulsion? Question mark. Campfire Stories by Mark Burnfire. I think it's time we talked about the pipeline survey job. We could talk about that. It could also be folded into a greater discussion about terrible jobs we've taken <laughs> and how much we expected our employers to look out for us, which we have learned over 20 years is almost certainly never the case. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Really quick recap. I enlisted in the military in 2004. I got out of the military in 2009. That's prior to eight years, though. 2009 through 2013, oh, I was going to There's college the for technical writing. Yeah. My dream job was to get a job teaching or writing about small arms repair, writing for a gun magazine, something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, that'd be lines. cool. You wanted to combine your two interests of writing and also fixating on guns. Yeah, yes. makes sense. So I was going to college for technical writing, and then one day one of the people I knew in the military gets a hold of me oh, and says, no. Hey, I am now teaching small no! arms repair to the U.S. military as a civilian at Fort Lee in Virginia. Uh -huh. I was like, well, hell yeah, that sounds awesome. How do I get that gig? <laughs> so I applied. I got the job almost immediately. It paid $27 wow. an hour. Nice. Quite nice, I think. That's yeah. back then money. This didn't require a degree. Nope, didn't require a degree. They offered me the job like immediately, so I dropped out of college my last no. year. <laughs> I barely started my last year of college. I was like maybe two weeks in. Mm -hmm. Dropped out of college. Mo dropped everything, moved to Virginia, started teaching small arms repair. Uh -huh. Since you had already started that semester, did you get your money back? No. Uh, <laughs> you spent an entire year's tuition and didn't attend. No, no just an entire semester's <laughs> tuition. It's still a lot. Yeah. yeah. Also, it wasn't my money. It was, was the other money. <laughs> <laughs> easier to throw that away. Uh, uh, yeah, it's easy. I had to pay that back. Easier, right? Uh, so, <laughs> Fair. Yeah, uh. that's one of the reasons that I still have student loans now is because I have to pay that back. <laughs> the semester you didn't I attend. I dropped out, yeah. Dropped out, moved to Virginia. Long story short, basically Congress deemed a bunch of budget cuts had to happen. No! And they reduced the amount of civilian contractors there were. And you were unfortunately one of the ones were cut. And I was one of the ones that got cut. God damn So, it. 2014, I find myself living in Virginia, separate from literally everyone I've ever known. Mm. I have one friend in Virginia who now has moved somewhere else because he also lost a job teaching small arms repair. Oh, so back no. down to zero friends in Virginia... Effectively became homeless. Wait, really? Yeah, I, I, I had, like, nothing. I couldn't afford to pay rent because I had lost my right. job. So I I, I rented a, a U-Haul truck yes. and then just yeah. lived in the back of that. I wasn't aware of this part. How long did that last? Uh, two weeks. Okay. Not yeah. terrible, but still, living out you, of the back of the U-Haul. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I, uh, this, is, this is one of the ways that I discovered that if you want hot food and you're homeless, what you can do is just take your car battery... And then go buy a crock pot from huh. Goodwill for like five bucks, and then just snip the electrical plug on the back of the crock pot, strip the two wires, and then attach them to the car battery, huh. and it heats the crock pot up. Neat. <laughs> okay, that's, so that's cool. How you can make hot food if you don't if all you have is a car battery and a crock pot. That's kind of cool. Why did you never tell me about this. Why were you suffering in silence? Uh, because I was embarrassed. Yeah, that's fair. Anyway, yeah. one of my friends from high school got a hold of me. We were talking about something, and he basically was like. Yeah, I got this job doing pipeline survey. It's really great. Uh, right now, they have me working on a bridge. Is a, is a pipeline. pipeline cross the bridge, Nani? Well, here, TTV, how's it going? Thank you for the follow. And cross the bridge? No, it was... The job was a cathodic protection job. What does that even mean? We refer to it as the pipeline survey job because that's better than a cathodic protection installation job. It sounds lewd. And what they were doing is using this thing that's like... A combination of an arc welder and a spray paint gun. So a plasma cutter. To literally like Isaac Clark. <laughs> and spray zinc. That's that neat. Patches onto the concrete that you then wire to the rebar inside of the concrete. Huh. That's so that that rusts instead of the rebar inside. Because when the rebar inside starts rusting, it starts causing spalling, which means that the concrete cracks and starts fragmenting all over the place. Huh. It, it obviously compromises the integrity of the bridge. Right. Basically, yeah. what he was doing was adding like 25 to 30 years of life to this concrete. Uh huh. He was spray painting metal on the bridge so that the spray painted metal rusts. Yes, exactly. Amazing. Anyway, he's uh, like, yeah, it seems it's, it's really a great technical. Job. It's paying like $30 an hour, mm -hmm. and you're getting prevailing wage, and you're getting Minnesota painter's wages. Uh huh. He was paying a 
stupid amount of money to do this job. And he was like, it's great. I'm basically the only You'll person You'll see in a second, here. Vince. I'll watch this. don't have to, like, report to other people. No one's There's, breathing down your back. Nobody's breathing down your back. You get to spend all day outside. Uh -huh. it's, like, it's hard work, but it's great. I was like, man, that sounds awesome. And he, he, he basically said, you know, we need another person. So do you want to do this? And I'm like... Yeah, I don't have a job. Yeah, I do. You gotta do. I don't have a college house. degree. I'm homeless. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, fine. I'll fucking do it. Because at this point, what I was waiting on while I, mean, I was going to Virginia, I, guess. Is I was waiting on my Merchant Mariner credential and my Twic card, which is Transportation Workers Identification credential, uh -huh. so that I could get a job working on a tugboat. Tugboat. <laughs> Boat. <laughs> if things had changed a little differently, if time had run its course a little differently, you could have been operating a tugboat. Yeah, I would have Boat. moved to Norfolk, Virginia. And been working on a tugboat, and by now I probably would have been a tugboat captain. Boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I have a high degree of mechanical inclination, and I was like, you know, working on a tugboat might be kind of cool. I found the phone number of a tugboat place, and I called them, and I was like, yo, do you need any workers? And they're like, what do you, what can you do? Well, I can fix small engines. I can kind of work on diesel engines. I know how to work on hydraulic systems. And they're like, yeah, we can use another engineer. Just get this stuff, and then get back to us. But because unfortunately. Uh, it ended up taking like four months for me to get my Merchant Mariner credential. Yeah. Um, so I would have been homeless for quite a while in Virginia before I actually. Could've, anyway, could've done took both. the pipeline job instead. Took the cathodic protection job instead. What it originally was was two weeks on, one week off. Uh huh. Okay. That was the original schedule. I would oh, work for two no. weeks, and then I would have an entire week off. That was and then the go original. Go back to work for two weeks, and then have an entire week off. Okay. And like it was so great. Oh, I didn't know first. that. That's when I interesting. showed up there to do this pipeline survey job, I had you know my steel-toed boots. I did have to go get some other boots because the steel-toed boots I was wearing were literally steel-toed combat boots, yeah. <laughs> and they were the jungle combat boots. Yeah. If you've never been to a bunch of construction sites, usually they are very wet and very muddy because yep. you're moving a lot of heavy equipment around that's just churning up the ground. Uh -huh. No grass to absorb it. I almost kind of got trench foot the first couple of days, Oof. but you know whatever, <laughs> it's fine. A we'll, story for another day. Story for another time. Like, you know what, you know Bobcats? The little bucket loader? Yeah! Things? Okay. They're, they're generally called like Skid Steer or a Bobcat or whatever. You oh, can okay. Call them whatever you want. Anyway, we had one of those, but it didn't I mean, have that a makes content. sense, Lynn. You would stand behind it and walk behind it as it moved itself along. Uh huh. Okay. So it's basically like a lawnmower only with tracks. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. And a little lift thing on the front. We named it Sheila. <laughs> okay. Because it had tanks. <laughs> uh, um, there were multiple points where like we would have to drive it through water that was almost knee deep. So he would sit on the top of it and reach behind us to operate the control. Because most of us know around, so what do they care? Uh -huh. <laughs> so that they would be basically submerged? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> just little, this little tiny diesel-powered thing is just going... <laughs> wading through my... Because it's, it's got a snorkel, so it can breathe. I didn't realize you were doing construction on Atlantis. <laughs> Because this was a bridge and it was going over effectively swamp land, uh, uh -huh. there were several parts where it was the mud was quite deep. The, the mud. So like starting out, the job was great. I had like zero complaints about it. Mm. It went incredibly well. Uh -huh. uh, like I enjoyed doing it. Uh -huh. It was good. That bridge assignment lasted about a month. Yeah, I think it was about a month. And then it was on to other jobs. And then it was that is when it started getting into the survey portion of the job, uh -huh. working with actual pipelines. Yeah. So what this job would entail is we had to apply the same cathodic protection systems to other pipelines. Uh -huh. And a lot of it either involved just doing like the standard standard anodes where you basically just slap a chunk of zinc onto the pipeline or installing rectifiers, which is a thing that converts alternating current into direct current. And the way a rectifier cathodic protection work system works, it, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. <laughs> I kind of care. Complex. It's all very complex. Basically, you take a thing that converts AC current to DC current, and it pumps electricity into the pipeline. Interesting. Which okay. Makes it last longer mm -hmm. somehow. I don't fully know. But anyway, R okay, I did sense. a lot of work in the Rust Belt area mm -hmm. uh -huh. of the United States. I didn't even know so this ironic. Was a thing. Now, what the job entails is either getting readings on a pipeline to see what condition it's in or directly installing cathodic protection systems. Uh -huh. And as I remember, the measurement portion generally consisted of taking some kind of rod and marching around with that, trying to yeah. follow it. You had these two things that looked like ski poles. Uh -huh. and they had little sensors in them, and you had to pour liquid in them for some reason. I forget exactly why. I don't fully understand how it worked. Basically, you would hook a current up to the pipeline, 
it would make the pipeline emit a frequency that you would use this rod thing to locate where the pipeline is. Amazing. You basically had a metal detector that not only detected the pipeline, but also told you how much charge it had to make sure it was in good condition. Neat. Yeah, to, something like that. Something along those lines. So you had this thing that you would attach to your chest on like a weird harness system. Uh-huh. Basically like a freaking graphing calculator that was slightly more advanced. <laughs> yeah. That you would connect that to these two ski poles that you had, and you would walk on top of roughly where the pipeline is, and every time you stuck one of the ski poles into the ground, you would push the button on top of it, and it would go beep, and it would measure <laughs> the current coming off the pipeline, mm. or whatever. Uh-huh. You have to have basically a contact point with the soil to do it. So if the pipeline goes under a road, or a driveway, or a pond, or a oh, lake, no. if it's a short distance, eh, whatever. <laughs> if it's a lake, you can't really go through the lake. There was, I remember doing one job that I don't think you were here for just yet, but this pipeline went all over the place under like a mall parking lot. (laughs) Oh my. So every six feet, we had to take a drill and drill through the, through the asphalt asphalt of of the parking lot and then pour water into the hole so that we could get a reading off of the pipeline. That sounds like that sucks. The job, what it turned into was me or somebody else walking along with the, the measurement system going beep, 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 beep every, like, six feet to mm. take a measurement. Someone else drilling holes in the concrete three feet apart from each other sounds, every six feet. This sounds ridiculous. And then someone else pouring water in the holes <laughs> with a bottle of water before you would get up to it so that you could take a measurement on it. This mall was still intact, right? It wasn't. Oh, those- yeah, it was still a functioning mall. So we're doing this, and there's, like, you have a belt that you have to wear, with a pouch on the back of it that carries like two miles wow. of copper wiring. Yes, because the way this works is you have to be connected to the pipe to measure it. Yes, and it's all very, very low voltage. You don't have to worry about it. No, like, I never got shocked you. by it or anything. Um, I did, but we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> okay. So when you get done surveying a thing, you have to go pick up all this copper wiring. And the copper wiring is very thin. It's about the thickness of a human hair. Wow. But it's like miles of this copper wiring because you would do sections like a mile long mm-hmm. in between where the like the survey points are. Uh-huh. The survey points are like a mile long. So you got to go back and pick up all that copper wire. Also, this copper wire, because it's so thin, there were multiple times where we would have to cross a road and then a car would drive across oh! the copper wire. The copper wire would immediately snap. Right. Or my personal favorite one, where the copper wire would get wrapped around the axle of the car, <laughs> and the car would just pull all, like, two <laughs> miles of your copper wire. So you're just walking along, and suddenly you, like, stop for a second, and it's really quiet, and you hear... <laughs> that noise, and you look behind you and see the copper wire like, shooting, out, shooting, out of it, shooting out of your pack, and you're like, oh, fuck, so then you got to snap it off. You don't have to worry about it getting wrapped around your hand or anything. There's no danger in it. It just means that now you have, like, two hours of work. You have to go back, find where the wire snapped. Mm-hmm. Awful. It just sucks. Yeah. I mean, the survey portion, honestly... For as much as we complain about it, it wasn't that bad. You were walking around holding ski poles for hours. It's really easy work for decent pay. For decent pay, and most of the time, you're outside. And it's generally relatively nice out. It makes sense. You can't do this job in the winter or the rain. No. If it's a rainy day, congratulations. You're getting paid to stay indoors. Nice. Pretty much, yeah. The other part of the job was inspecting cathodic protection systems that had already been installed or had been there before. So, basically, you would have to go up to one of these rectifiers, this thing that's converting AC current to DC current. Right. Mm. You would have to go up to this thing and take measurements off of it. Mm -hmm. That is how I accidentally took uh, 750 milliamps directly across the chest. Oh, no. What I did is I went up to a rectifier to get readings off of it. Mm. Normally, what you do is you hold the multimeter in one hand. Uh Uh-huh. You take the little alligator clip that's attached to the multimeter, and you go clip and clip one wire on. Clip. Clip the second wire on. Uh-huh. Yeah. All while only ever putting one hand onto the thing. Uh-oh. What I did, because I was in a hurry and impatient, oh, is no. I walked up with the positive and negative wires in my right and oh, left no. hand. And went boop and put both of them on <laughs> at the same, same time. time. Because I didn't even think about it. Mm-hmm. Did not even think about it at all. <laughs> put them on there, and the moment I attached them, my hands went numb. Yep. And my chest hurt really oh, bad. Oh, no. And I went... Ow, that really hurts. <laughs> this was, 
was for such a imperceptibly short period of time. Mm -hmm. I immediately had to like sit down and I'm just like, oh, I feel sick. You just like, got electrocuted. Don't my whole walk. chest oh my God, really that's bad. Awful. And shortly after doing this, I could feel and kind of hear my heartbeat going. Because <laughs> 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 your body runs off electric. So electric it was 750 milliamps, which is the point that can cause severe heart palpitations, possible heart failure, extreme pain. Oh, you felt that. Wow. Hell yeah, I felt all those things because my heart didn't want to run correctly. Uh uh. So when you take that many milliamps of direct current, it's basically overriding the signal going from your brain yep. to your heart, yep. telling it how to beat. <laughs> yeah, to figure it back out a couple seconds. Yeah, it, so it took a minute of my heart going, oh, oh God, what the <laughs> fuck? Ah! <laughs> I basically spent the rest of the day feeling like absolute dog shit and feeling like I wanted to throw I up. I believe it. I believe that. I hit myself with AC current before. I, it wasn't pleasant, but I, I moved on pretty quickly. DC current, I wouldn't want to mess with that. The, the way I awful. described it, when I was working this job is alternating current lets you know you fucked up. <laughs> Direct current grabs onto you and doesn't fucking let go until you are dead. <laughs> Luckily, it was such a low amperage that it didn't just fucking kill me. Uh -huh. Yes, that could have happened. I, this is also how I realized that people just won't fucking do something if there isn't a law about it. Probably. <laughs> and by, by people, I mean companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for example, they called us out to do a survey on a pipeline this pipeline went under a metro system, like a, a electric powered train. Uh -huh. Okay. And we're doing surveys <laughs> on this pipeline. I forget what the exact numbers were. It doesn't matter. Let's just say that the numbers are supposed to be within 0.1 to 0.4. Right, okay. okay. That's where the numbers should be. Oh no. Every single time a train would pass over this pipeline, the current was spiking to like, 6.4 wow like exponential 5 and like this pipeline is not designed to and to have that much current going through it mm -hmm. this pipeline it can Model board. maybe Oof. handle one volt going through it <laughs> wow yeah. so, so you're like, at... yeah do a survey on this pipeline and we come back with these results of yeah this pipeline might fucking explode <laughs> <laughs> yeah you need to like get this looked at well, can you install, install one that'll just absorb the current? <laughs> no! No, we can't. You need to replace this whole fucking pipeline! Oh, uh, okay. Well, we'll, like, we'll put it in the budgetary yeah. meeting. What do you mean? <laughs> it's gonna fucking blow up! There would there would be times we would show up, and some crotchety 60-year-old guy would be like, Yeah, go fix this pipeline. We're not supposed to fix it. We're just, like, looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> We're just supposed to look at the pipeline. Yeah. Well, I don't know where it is. Here's the charts of where all the pipelines are. This was done in 1920. Mate. How do you not know where your own pipelines are going? Don't worry about it. like a state map, but it's like the old oh. kind of state maps where like the state of Michigan is like smashed and oh, smushed. No. Yeah, it's a state map from like the 1800s. How? <laughs> no, I know how. It makes me Back angry. Back Lewis and Clark were mapping it out. I, I am not joking. There were legitimately points where we showed up to do a survey on a pipeline <laughs> And the last time a survey had been done wow. was 1960-something. Mm. That was because that was the last time that the federal government said, hey, you probably want to check your pipelines. Wow. It was baffling to me that, like, our infrastructure could be that completely fucked. It is. Yeah. It's so screwed. Like, the model's being weird. The, the software's being weird the past couple days is why. Two houses. The natural gas pipeline is still made out of fucking lead. Wow. <laughs> We can't get a reading off the pipeline. Because lead. And it's metal. It's a metal pipeline. But it's toxic. So it's just a lead pipeline. Something, yeah. There were there were a lot of places that, to their credit, they were like, yeah, we need you to get a reading off this pipeline so that we can replace it with plastic because, like, we cannot have it be made out of metal. <laughs> mm. So there are, some, there are some people that are responsible. There are some companies that are actually being somewhat responsible about it. Sometimes their feet are being held to the fire. We did run into some very interesting things. Um, there was one time we got shot at while we were uh, doing Amazing! This. To clarify, we didn't get shot at because we were doing this. We got shot at because we were on the back of somebody's property. I mean, it makes sense. didn't know we were back there, and so they were shooting. Okay, hold the fuck up, though. How does that happen? Because, oh, I didn't even know this was a 40-minute video. How the fuck does that happen? Because you're managed, like, the person in charge there should be notifying anybody. I mean, like, it, yeah, guys, we, we, we all know we all know the America memes, right? We all, we all know the America memes. Someone shows up in your fucking backyard, 
and you don't know them, and you know you're like, um, the fuck you doing here? Oh, where we're doing pipe surveys? Where the f- where the fuck's the paperwork, bro? Like, I mean, we could we could like, am I off base with that? Like, backwards of the U.S. I mean, to, like, dude, the uh, allegedly even in, uh like rural parts of Idaho, like country, they won't even give you that credit allegedly because if you are if say for example if I go out to the middle of fuck off nowhere and I end up on someone's farmland, one. I'm clearly trespassing on their land, too. I mean, it's going to be their word versus mine, and they're going to shoot to protect their land. Like, I mean, I, I can... I, <laughs> well, technically isn't gun safe. You know, I can't necessarily fault them because I'm not supposed to be there. So, I just... I just don't think I shot up. And I look. Right, that's the thing, is that the, the people that are, like, doing this, like like... They need to be telling people, oh, we'll be on your land on this date, right? At least give you a fucking heads up in the mail or something like that. They could also be talking. Yeah, I mean, that's also fair. Shooting. They were just shooting. They were shooting something, but we heard several bullets snap and hit, and bullets hitting sticks. And we went, yeah, we're done doing the survey in this part. And basically booked yeah, it no, like fair. a quarter mile in a different direction until we got away from that area. And then started doing the survey again. Mm-hmm. Fact it was you. kind of funny because I remember putting on the notes of that section, survey canceled because bullets. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, survey stopped due to bullets, survey started because no, no bullets. bullets. <laughs> there you go. Like wolf. Because we're doing this in the middle of the daytime, the only people that are home are people who work third shift, uh-huh. and they're asleep, so they don't care. Right. Uh, like stay-at-home parents or retired people. Retired people, mm-hmm. yeah. Retired people are bored yes, and have nothing to do. Except come outside and try to waste your time. Yeah, Luckily, I have not been shot at. Luckily. What are you doing in my backyard? Oh, you're doing a pipeline survey. Interesting. Interesting. Tell me, how long have you been doing this? How long <laughs> they been just waste this? your fucking Where time. Are you from? Oh, that's disappointing. Let me tell you about my son. My son oh my used God. to work for the Navy. Oh, you're from this state? What do you think about football team <laughs> from that state? <laughs> So there were points where we would just get stuck talking to people for 30, 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, nothing he'll do. He's got nothing to do, and his kids never call right. him anymore, and he just wants to ask you about things. It sounds annoying, but you're still getting paid hourly. Yeah. But then there are times where it's just like, I just want to get done with the survey. There's only a quarter mile left in the survey. Leave me alone so I can get finished. <laughs> so no one ever When I was working with this other guy, there were points where we would literally just be like, there's a guy standing outside. Go on up ahead and start talking to him so I can just book it through here. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I remember one point <laughs> we were walking piping. along. I'm oh, I Kiwi, I get it. I have, I've had those callers. And they come outside. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's okay now. I'm just doing a I'm I'm doing a survey of the pipeline that's here. There's no pipeline there. Uh huh. Yes, there is. I'm connected to it right now. <laughs> no, I can tell you there, a, there isn't a fucking pipeline there. Yes, there is. Yeah. I'm gonna be out of here in just a second. If you don't get off my property, I'm calling the sheriff. Cool. You know, if you hadn't said anything to me, I'd already be gone. Yeah. If you literally had said nothing to me, <laughs> yeah. I would be out of your yard by Making now. their own problems. Be a copper wire going through your lawn, but it's so thin you wouldn't even notice. She, she wouldn't have even seen it there. So she, I ended up getting into like a like a, a yelling match with this woman for about 20 minutes because Bro, I, I want to go get home, off her property. Right? But she wouldn't stop yelling at me and getting in my face. Mm. I've met people like that. People that think they own the sidewalk in front of their house. Yeah, they don't. Not the how that works. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you still have to plow it for some reason. Yeah, I figure that one Depending out. Depending on where you live, yes. Yeah. I just that the I think, easiest actually. thing to do. I would look up who the who the utility provider was for that area. <laughs> I would just be walking through an area. So Kiwi brings up an interesting point about callers, and I can say it I can like say this because it's like obviously nondescript enough, right? Like I've had people just like completely derail a conversation and they start talking about how like the fucking FBI has a base on the moon and like xyz conspiracy theory while i'm working on shift and i've i've had to talk to these people for like two to three hours about like moon men and the fbi and how uh the government has fucking weather machines in alaska you know terraforming and doing weather alteration i just have to sit there like can't hang up i mean yes i get paid but i literally like like can I do something for you? Is there something in my, like in my job title I can do for you? Anything? And they're just like, no, like yeah, yeah but the 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 weather machines and Bilderbergers. No, I just want to do my job. <laughs> just fucking. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm with Edison Electric. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Leave you alone. Yeah. 
it sounds like you're describing a lot of minor annoyances, except from being electrocuted and shot at. Yeah, I mean, the shot that's kind of relevant. Minor annoyances, but the job itself wasn't terrible. It was enjoyable. Um, and then it kind of went from like two weeks on one week off yeah, to like people are three weeks on one week off. Oh, see, then okay, it changed. They asked yep. for a little bit more yep. work from you. Okay, fine. So, yeah, three yeah. out of the four weeks of a month you get work, and then you spend a week at home. Fine. Yeah. That, that seems yeah. fair. Okay. okay, fine. That still makes that's sense. Still okay. Yeah. And. You were working like temp jobs at the time, weren't you? Probably, yeah. So you upsold this to me. You told me it was a good job. It was. It I, was. To be fair, it was. I've had I jobs that have done you, that, though. And we did this job. Sure enough, it seems fairly easy. I think our daily schedule was that we would wake up, make sure our gear was in order. We'd go down to a, a Denny's or a local restaurant. We'd use the daily stipend they gave us to eat some breakfast. Uh -huh. And then we'd go out into the field work for eight to ten hours, then go back for dinner, right? and then it would be seven o'clock, and we'd have the evening to ourselves. Right. Except you, with your brand new promotion, oh, no. who had to do an extra two hours of Ooh, work. Gross. So you basically were working from when you woke up to when you went to bed. Yes. And Oof. you talked about how you were working for two or three weeks, and then you'd have a week off. Oh, no. But when I was there, you were scheduled for five, five weeks, weeks uh, <laughs> and one week off. Yeah. I had been working for over a month without That's a not bueno. When their job originally started, it was hourly pay, which was pretty good. Mm -hmm. You That's had to one, yeah. save money because in the winter, you weren't getting paid because you weren't working. Right. right? The people that were in charge of the company decided, we're going to do salary. Yep, that's because the that one. Way, that, that's yeah. the one. I had a chef who had chef that worked under salary. Fucker came, or dude came in like 90 hours a week at certain points. Especially this was the weird like theater kitchen uh serve in your seat hybrid kind of thing right um and like dude would come in for like 70 to 90 hours regular especially around big releases like star wars around like marvel movies and stuff pulling 90 hours because he's salary and he still gets the same amount as if he came in for 40 like that's one of those things that like getting paid hourly is theoretically better in that case once you're not a financial advisor do your research like from what i've experienced that's how that's how some companies can get you is that they'll put you on salary, but goddamn, you're gonna be there ninety hours a week and on call, and you know you'd be making <laughs> you'd be making out like a bandit if you were getting paid hourly. Like, uh, yeah, it, it it is the bait, uh, flat rate versus hourly. Yeah, it's. I I have I have had people have misconcept I've, I've had people get messed up on salary and get completely just screwed over. So, oh man. Enclave Operator, thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. No, you're totally fine, Waz. I didn't know this was this long one, so we have a long mic burn fire tonight. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Let us explain. <laughs> We're going to do salary because that way we'll bank all of your overtime hours. No, you won't. Mm. And then you can get paid in the winter uh -huh. with all of your overtime hours. It's mm -hmm. not going to work that way, though. Okay, what's going to be my hourly pay rate? Well, it's, it's $15 yep. an hour. But you're gonna be getting paid time and a half on overtime, uh -huh. and you guys, you guys work a lot of overtime. Uh -huh. You work a lot of overtime. But you're only salary now. I can't now. believe they actually sold you on the idea of going from hourly to salary by saying, if you let us pay you less now, you'll get paid we more. We promise to pay you for the months you're not working. Yeah. How naive were we? I mean, it was a smaller company. I thought he was gonna do it. Uh, all this stuff is going on. I'm working way more than right. I, I want to work. Yeah. Yes, the boss yes, of we the do, company Kiwi. lived to work. Yeah. I wanted to work to live. Yeah, accurate. Yeah. I did not want to live to work. Yeah. His he, job was his business. It was his life. I live to work, it and it's awful. Life. I need to it do it. It was basically his legacy. Did, did he say that? I know. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> he acted like it was, though. He, yeah. He was so dedicated to it. He was very, very dedicated to his job. Yeah. So it started off with your friend, and he invited you. Yes. And then you invited me. Mm -hmm. So it was the three of us and the boss and the supervisor for a while. And then the supervisor brought on his daughter. Uh -huh. The daughter didn't really gel well with the pipeline survey job. Uh -huh. She didn't want to crawl around in the weeds like us guys. She didn't want to get dirty. No, she was much better suited to be uh, a model. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say a secretary or a desk job. But yeah, yeah, she was a hot older teenage girl and that's not my description. Her father would say that. Oh yeah, my daughter is so <laughs> hot. Yeah. Oh. Which was a little weird. A little, uh, a little bit. Wasn't there one point where she basically jumped into your lap because of a bug? 
She was in the driver's seat of the car on her phone. Oh, no. And I was in the passenger seat of the vehicle. And she looked to her left and saw a giant cricket or a, a cockroach or something. And she panicked and threw herself on the other side of the vehicle and <laughs> clambered over onto my side. Fun. Yeah. She was not an outdoorsy type of person. Technically... I don't know why her father... I mean, if especially if you felt uncomfortable that technically there might be enough for a sexual harassment suit there. Because, like, for example, like, if I'm doing a job, right, and someone does this to me, I'm going to tell them to get off me. Like, why are you on me? Oh, there was a bug. Like, your point? Like, get off me. Like, just... Especially when I work, because I, like, blind, like... I have, like, horse with blinders, like, super fixate on my job. Um... Like, especially because, you know, there are people, and maybe because I've met some just really shitty people, like, there are people that would do would do shit like this with dubious intent. <laughs> Please don't. I, I am not a touchy person. I, I am not. People, like, all my life have been like, oh, I just want to, like, hug you, and can I, like, pat you on the shoulder? I'm just like, Please don't. I really don't like being physically touched. <laughs> I thought it was a good fit. It's a, it's a weird personal know. thing. I just don't there like it. There were many employees, but there were some other. Oh, my God. I forgot about Geoff. Geoff. I don't believe I was with you when you had Geoff. You the may team. be wondering why I'm mispronouncing the name Jeff. <laughs> because his name was spelled G E H O F F. Geoff. Geoff. <laughs> but he insisted that his it's name Jeff. was pronounced yep. Geoff. What? <laughs> he was a very weird man. Mm -hmm. uh, his previous job was working at Burger King. And he was the most ooh, so gormy, yes, that, socially no, that type. awkward motherfucker. And this oh, is coming from no. me. Yeah, Dude. Well, this job is great for Dude him. Dude is cringe, you right? You really have oh. to interact with people except when they yell at you for being in their yard. And shooting at you. Yeah, yeah, and he did not handle anyone taking any type of tone to him. Wow. Because he would just freak out and didn't understand what was happening. That almost anyway, streams I'm, neurodivergency. I blocked almost. most of his memory from my mind. Fair enough. Probably for good reason. Did I, did I, was I at that company long enough to earn my one-week break? I think I just kind of gave up after three weeks. <laughs> I, just I think it was maybe a month at most that I spent there. The time for me at that job has become incredibly dilated because of how long I spent working. So it made it seem longer than it probably actually yeah, was. Yeah, I know what yeah. that feels like. So yeah. We were doing a job, I think it was in Ohio. No! Probably. No! Well, this oh, fuck off! Bro, I, d I don't even how. <laughs> Fuck off. Ohio, why? Bro, I literally cannot escape Ohio. Jesus fuck. One happened to go under what was basically like a preserve, so they weren't allowed to clear it. So we're basically stumbling fuck. through brush that is. Every single stream, that's the joke. We're getting this weird pollen dust all over us. Nice. Yeah, one day, it was just a particularly bad day. You had been working for five weeks straight. You'd been working for, what, 13 hours a day, including all the paperwork. Awful. Longer than that. It was that's nonsense. It, it was obviously... You were having one of the worst allergy attacks I've ever seen anyone oh, have. Oh, I hate I these allergy you, attacks. I oh. legitimately thought you might pass out. <laughs> because <laughs> there was a point where you sneezed... For I am not fucking kidding. Over a minute, I've done this. Yep. I'm sneezing. Yep. I didn't realize my sinus could hold that much mucus. It was your body was just taking any moisture it had <laughs> and diverting it to mucus production. <laughs> a minute doesn't seem that long until you do nothing but sneeze for one You're minute. Like, oh god, it's been five. Forever. Yeah. So I was feeling overworked. I was watching you be even more overworked. Yeah. They were, I think, actually cutting the amount of money we're getting for DM. So we actually had to spend our own money on Gross, food. We were man. spending our own money on food. You had walked through some poison ivy at one point and didn't realize it, but the poison ivy yeah, motion no wasn't even in the yeah. vehicle because the boss had taken it out of the car the previous night. No. And it, it's summer, so we're sweating like fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. I've got poison ivy on my hands, and I wipe no! my eyes, which means now I have poison ivy in my eyeballs. Oh, no. We get back up to the truck. My eyes are starting to, like, swell oh, and have no. turned completely red. I look like I smoked all the marijuana in <laughs> My eyes are so red. <laughs> yeah, bloodshot. You drove back to the hotel. I basically had to take a shower in this poison ivy soap that was back at the hotel room. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> what a nonsense day that, that was. That sounds well, awful. Oh, God, it sucked. That night, we were after I had, like, gotten all the poison ivy off me, you were like, I don't know if I can keep doing this job. I hate this job. Yeah. And that was the point where Respect. I was like... Oh fuck! I think I, I hate this job. job too. Yeah. <laughs> I think I really hate this job. Like, and because I had basically 
the only like good job I had had up until that point was teaching small arms repair. Mm. Uh huh. So I'm just acclimatized to that, shit that's jobs. That's fair. Yeah. I had a lot of them. Yeah, that's fair. I had had better experiences than you at that point. So even though I was having a better time than you because I didn't have to do paperwork for two hours a day, I still wasn't happy. The job was miserable. Yeah. I, I can't do this anymore. I no, not even two weeks. No, I've been working five weeks. You can't have a girlfriend or or a wife if you're working five weeks out of every six weeks somewhere else. I'm paying rent at my apartment and I'm never. I'm not even there. Yeah, that's the fucked part. Yeah, I'm not even there the majority of the time. It was a terrible job, so we quit. Um, and I never went back. I wish I never went back. Oh, you went back. So, like, that's the thing. And, like, I know, like, it's not common decor. It's not proper, quote-unquote, right? If you are at a job and you're like, well, you know, I don't like this. You're supposed to give your two weeks, right? And obviously this depends on states. Where, like, if you're a state that's, like, right to work, right? I mean, they can terminate you. Sometimes even if it's in your contract, right? They can just terminate you without notice. But technically you're supposed to give them two weeks, all that fun stuff. And also you're not supposed to talk about, you know, wanting to get another job because it's seen as rude and impolite, right? The amount of jobs I've been in that just, like, people are like, bro, I don't like this, or, you know, I've been thinking about other places, and they're, like, genuine, genuinely just kind of looking for feedback or reassurance. I've been that person that's been like, look, like, I know that it's not seen as proper, I know that's not seen as, you know, respectful, quote-unquote. Honestly, like, if you don't like it here, like, do what you're gonna enjoy, you know, do what's gonna make you feel appreciated, 100%. I mean, I'm actually a little sad because, well, leaving my last job, I have coworkers that I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to talk to again. I've messaged a couple of them, uh, but yeah, they have other things they're doing with their life, which is completely fair. And, you know, I've had people talk to me and they're just, they're not happy with their current situation or they're not happy with their pay and, you know, they just, they need a, they just need someone to listen to them. And it's like, yeah, I'll listen. Like, if you don't, I, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, condescending of them. I'm not going to be, you know, uh, uh, judgmental of them. Look, if you don't feel comfortable here at a job, go where you're going to feel comfortable. Go what's going to make you... Life is way too fucking short is, is the short of it, right? Life is way too short. Don't be the weird coworker that's like, oh, well, this is against regulate. No, just like, I get it. If you don't feel like, if you don't feel like you're wanted here, if you don't feel safe here, go ahead and move. Like, you still can do that. Uh, don't talk about leaving. That's just yeah. It is it is management, and that's why I open. I'll openly talk about my salary with coworkers. Hundred percent. Back. So I didn't have a job for like two or three weeks, and I was just like, oh shit, what the fuck am I gonna do? Right. And yeah. The guy that had originally told me about the job was like, yeah, it. If you can come back, uh, like we really yeah. need help. Cause we we can't actually afford any good. Ha! Employees, got him. So yes, know your worth as well. Fine, I'll come back. Like, I'm in an interesting situation, so the job I'm going into only pays, like, 12 an hour. Like, and that's the thing, is it's one of those things that, like, you know, it's whatever, I'm fine with it, perfectly fine with it. You know, I was making, like, sub-18 before, but I also just was at a point where, like, you know, because current banking things, I'm also just like, eh, it, it was professional differences, right? Not that I, like, hated the environment or anything, like, just professional differences, leave it at that. Um... You know, yes, I'm making less money at it, but, like, this is something I feel that I can, especially coupled with YouTube and Twitch, right? Something that I feel that I can do well and something that isn't going to drive me into the ground if I don't let it, right? You know, and I'm in a fortunate position to do that where a lot of people aren't. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I did the math, and it's like, even then, 12 an hour is only a few, is, is like a few hundred less. Not even, like, high hundreds, like like 300 less than if I was... Uh, still making 17, 18. So it's like, what do I care about more? My time and my well-being and being able to do things like SCA, like streaming, like content creation, like reacting like I am right now and making like five less dollars an hour from a full-time job or going back to a 17, 18 dollar an hour thing where um, just things don't quite make sense because, you know, modern banking, right? <laughs> uh, one of those things. It's work is work is work is rough work is weird <laughs> did they give you a better offer to entice you back better pay or no hours? i got paid less because i had quit before and they weren't sure oh, they could trust me people who had been you were desperate out. they said they take you back at a reduced rate yep yeah I, I believe it Foxy, I guess 100%. I it's better to... than it's better than because i if you've ever been out of work yeah and had to fair. apply for jobs it is the most demeaning thing ever especially if you're someone like me that the graduated from college right around when the 2008 yeah, recession was really starting to fucked. happen. Mm. 
where it was just like impossible to find jobs. They just didn't need people. Yeah, no. So I start working at the job again, and it's it sucks. You went back. And my friend was like, "It's it's it's a little it's better now. It's a little bit better." Yeah, because yeah. they realized they were fucked. If you come back in five weeks, it's going to be winter. So we're going to be getting the salary for winter. They're going to fuck him over because he came quit. Back, I worked there. They're going to fuck him over because he quit. Four weeks in. Oh, we've decided we're not going to do salary uh-huh. anymore. We're going back to hourly pay. Uh-huh. And there's yep. the burn. Yeah. Fucking what? So all that money you were going to get over winter is gone now. Yes, it what, is. What about all that overtime that I worked like earlier in the year? Because you, you quit working yep. for us, so you don't get that. Yep. That's the one. What? Yeah. We, yep. It's just it's not financially responsible for us to do salary. Mm-hmm. Cool, I quit. Yeah. Bye. I quit. No, They probably just were buy. banking on you guys to quit. They weren't ever going to pay you in the winter. No. The other guy that was there, we both quit. We're just like, what? No, we're done. We're done. No, no. Like, this is this is insane. And you you said that you don't trust me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't trust me, so you're hiring me at a lower rate? Mm-hmm. Because I might quit again? Guess what? I fucking did. Yeah. Boy, I sure proved you right. Mm-hmm. People don't quit bad... People don't quit jobs. They quit managers. This is, like... I And I've, I keep seeing it in places. Like, you places will be good, or even, like, they're good on the outside, or they could just genuinely be good places. And just they keep, they they shift, and suddenly you know you're not getting your Christmas bonus. Suddenly, um, you know uh, the, the attendance policies change. That way, you can't even get a bathroom break without having to use your PTO, right? And uh, or you know people are on the schedule, but they don't you know they don't show up for fucking six months, and you're like, well, are they here or not? Well, they technically haven't come in, so we can't fire them. I'm like, the fuck. <laughs> So I, I I I've seen it. So this yeah no the work there are workplaces that have just straight up declined like that going pretty well. How about you, Golden? Uh, a lot of tips you got there, Shirley. It's enough to get you here on fucking. I just it's I don't know the the bar for being a good person and even a good company is not that high to hit, and that's what just perplexes me. Maybe it's my neurodivergency talking. It just it perplexes me that th- people and companies can just choose to be shitty like this and especially in the name of profit and like don't get me wrong i've caught myself in thought traps where it's like oh yeah no i want to do more with twitch do more with youtube and you know then i focus on more of the money aspect of it then i'm just like but i don't want to i want to do this because it's fun and be myself and then everything else can come later i don't want to do this like i'm milking a money a cash cow right like, I think that's going in with the wrong... Per, for me, at the least, it's going in with the wrong mentality. I mean, would I be any different than Logan Paul and CryptoZoo at that point if I chose to do it just for the money? That, that you know, that's that's the reality check for me. <laughs> so, I just... Yeah, no, and, and I've also described this weird effect with management where... So, if you have, say, um, like a stack, right? Just, just like a stack, right? Or, you know, just down and then top, right? All the high management CEOs, stuff like that. And even there are certain CEOs, like, what is it? One of the, I think it's like the Equifax CEO is a CEO on another company's panel. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. If you're a CEO of a credit bureau, I don't think you should... I think that's a conflict of interest to have a second CEO or board job. i just saying. Um, but all the CEOs, executives, etc. And then even then upper and middle management, all of them are staying static, right? So this, this circle I'll make on my screen, they're all staying static. When down here, the lower management... Um, and just your ground level workers, they're leaving, they're reti- they're getting out of that, you know? So, and the people that do want to get promoted or are good at the job, right, can't move up because all these people up here are just staying stagnant. You know, they're effectively just sitting at work, maybe not even doing their job. I used to know a person when I worked at a restaurant that they're just like, oh, well, I just, you know, they're like, they were getting close to retirement. They're like 60 something. And there's like, oh, just, just. You know, I just show up Saturday. I'm supposed to work, but you know, it's I don't I don't really show up to work if that if that makes sense, right? He just shows up but doesn't work, and I just you know, my my black and white brain didn't like that. But I mean, it makes sense for what he says, especially if the job doesn't you know doesn't appreciate you. Totally makes sense. Um, so you just get all these people that just stagnate when your lower force is just churning in and out and in and out and in and out. Which, yeah, the the bottom is disposable at this point. Why aren't these people that especially should be retired at this point? Why are they just not going elsewhere? Oh, because there's not money in retirement. Huh, maybe we should address <laughs> address a problem with people and finances. That's a deeper issue. But, I mean, obviously, I feel that's going to get into the weird... That's going to get outside of economics and into politics at that point, which I don't want to get into. So, I just... Uh, like... Man, I, I've thought way too long and hard about the stagnancy of middle management up towards the top of the food chain. And 
this whole interaction down here with people at the floor level and people just trying to work to live and work to survive, right? It's 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 a depressing thought train. And now that we're older, we know all the things like if they're going to change your employment contract, get it in writing. Correct. Yeah. Don't just trust your employer to yeah. do what's right for you. Fact. On that topic of not trusting get everything your in writing. employer, our friend Ryan, he worked for a, uh, a dairy company for a while. <laughs> okay. He worked that for them a long time, basically shipping milk. At one point, his Christmas bonus mm -hmm. was he got five free gallons of milk. Oof. Oh, boy. The t the, I cannot drink I didn't even get one this year. Oh, it's fine. It's coupons, so you can redeem Every other year, whenever. people oh, have gotten one. This year, we got nothing. Plan. Despite the fact that you work at a dairy plant and you can just grab a gallon of milk whenever you need one. Mm -hmm. one Watching another Mike Burnfire video. There, and he was talking to the new employee, and the new employee was like, oh yeah, I'm getting paid X amount of dollars. Yep. And that was why more than he was being paid. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so he basically was just like, yeah, I'm not doing any more work today until you pay me as much or more than he is getting paid. That's the <laughs> <one>. <laughs> Nice. I'm not doing anything else. And that's fair. I'm, I'm literally doing nothing else until you pay me as much or more than he's getting paid. And that's paid. completely well, fair. We'll have to talk to management about then do that. it. Fine, but I'm not doing anything until then. That is so commendable to stand your ground. Yeah, absolutely. I wish I could have done that. We took so much abuse because we were convinced that employers will have your best interest in mind. No, they, they don't. They care about you. Yeah. No, they don't. No, they don't. Did they actually fire him there? Hence why no, work-life balance is important. Money. Don't there let anyone go. tell you otherwise. It, it wasn't much, but it was more. Uh -huh. After I quit the pipeline survey job, I took a job working at a factory that produces the dyes they use to stamp out the body parts of cars. Okay. So I worked at a company that makes those things. Right, yeah, and exactly. I was just doing gotcha. custodial work at that job. You're just the reason making I sure you're covering your bases. Job, not because it was absolutely god awful. No, because back then you would still put up with that stuff. I was still putting up with it. I was like, I still, I need to work, and yeah, it's only ten dollars an hour, but whatever, fuck it. Mm. I, I, if you I need, need money, money, you need money. If you missed a day of work during your probationary period, which was one hundred and eighty days, you're gone. You were fired. Yeah, zero tolerance policy. How many people missed it and, and kept missed their job? I told them beforehand. I was like, hey, I need, I need like this time off. Mm. Well, I don't know if we can do that. Like, yeah. I have to leave. I have a doctor appointment. This is actually why. Let's not forget, I'm a veteran I, with PTSD, yep. and I'm on brain pills. Yes. So I might just want to fucking murder myself. Mm -hmm. Valid. Maybe I'm having valid a real point. fucking bad time, man. Yeah, I gave you forewarning. I'm not going to be here that day. I'm not going to be here that day. I have to be somewhere. Technically, don't workplaces have to accommodate this, especially because, like, on job applications, right? You have to answer: Do you have a disability? Are you a protected veteran? Have you served in the U.S. Armed Forces? You know the whole questionnaire, right? Uh, what What is your gender? What is your? I always it always weirds me out that like you get the, the what race are you? I'm just like human question mark. Oh no, are you white, Asian, uh, etc. It's like. I can't, it's the fact that this still matters to people. Anyways, moving on. Um, like, yeah, no, did you, it, yeah, if it is it in writing, if not, get fucked. No, I got you, you're completely right. Like, it's just fucking nasty how just, like, it's shitty. Like, you go into the military, right? And uh, you don't get me wrong, the military is its own culture in itself. I'm not shitting on that aspect, you know? Do I disagree with maybe some of the, uh, the higher-ups, do I disagree with, you know, uh, the intent such as, like, you know, WMDs going into, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, right? Once again, we're treading on that political line, right? The point is that, like, while I can disagree with, like, the whys on occasion, generally, if I run into a service member, right? Fuck yeah, how you doing, man? H how you doing, person? Hi! Thank you for everything that you did. You might have had a shitty time, but thank you for doing something that you believed in, right? I think we can all agree on that. I think we can all, regardless of political affiliation, regardless of feelings, if someone is going to go into the military and do something that they believe in, right, or even with the intent of it being you rather than someone else that doesn't have the training, right, I, that's incredibly noble. That's selfless. And you should be recognized for that. And it's like, just, it pisses me off when, like, you have, like, stories like, uh, earlier this year, was it earlier this year or was this late last year? The suicide hotline, uh, to the VA, someone was put through to voicemail. And, like, I, I have, I have people that I know in the medical field. I don't have any insider information or anything like that. But I've had people comment about, man, why are we getting all this mental health training? I'm not, it's not my position to be mental health. And I'm like, I guarantee you that something's come down the chain of command somewhere because they're like, oh, fuck, this is actually an issue. Yeah, no, veterans are going to come back with PTSD. Veterans are going to come back with issues. Veterans are going to come back not being acclimated to, quote-unquote, normal society. 
Like, you, you were... Veterans were literally trained to be able to fight people, to, to be able to fight things, right? It's a very unique skill set, but niche in a quote-unquote civvy world, am I wrong? Isn't that why people will go into, like, uh, what is it, Blackwater? It, mer- some people will just straight up go into, like, mercenary corps and stuff like that. That being said, that might just be, you know, an extreme end of the spectrum. I'm not entirely versed on that. point that I'm getting is, like, veterans have it shitty. Like, as, as I mentioned, I have a buddy who came off of a sub... And he got discharged because it just fucked with his head so much. Not that he did anything wrong. Not that he, you know, got dishonorably discharged or anything like that. It just fucked with his head just so bad. And, you know, he, he uh, dude messaged me the other day. And he's just like, man, this, this shit's fucking with me. Because I guess he got put on a new med or something like that. And, like, I'm like, if it's making you feel like shit, stop it and call your doctor. Like, and, that, and that's with anything, right? If you're, say, taking a new medication and, you know, you're you're just not feeling it absolutely go and ask you that's why they're supposed to be there this is turned into weird medication thing anyways moving on um but like i i can't understand what veterans go through i can't understand what it's like to be military and ex-military because i myself haven't done it i feel like i can empathize and i feel like i can you know champion like this is shitty for a lot of people let's not make this worse for people yeah and if someone needs a day off because they have an important appointment that keeps them alive yeah fucking do it get that shit in writing uh, go with thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for doing something I can't. Hence why I worded it the way I did. Uh, don't know enough about the Canadian system. Uh, give me my... <laughs> Herbie Ross. <laughs> uh, doesn't fire you. Excuse me, eight days without reason. 180 period. Excused absences don't count. Right, and that's the thing. Excused absences. Are you... Can you get a, literally get a doctor's note? Yes, cool. You should be covered then perfectly. Just fine. Thank you for your sacrifice. Yep. Yep. I, I could see that. 100% Meldeborn. 100%. Like, and that's, I don't know, I feel at a certain point it becomes like, oh, military becomes intrinsic with politics. I don't think so. I can thank someone for the sacrifice that they made. I can thank someone for what they did and wanted to do with their life. I think there's nothing political about that, recognizing that someone died. I literally had a call. Um, I had a caller, and they were saying that they were going to, this is obviously anonymous, right? You don't even know what um, what call I'm talking about or where it was at. And they were saying that they wanted, they were uh, getting ready to go, uh, they wanted to get their finances in order and get some auto pays and stuff set up, because he was going to be gone for like the next eight weeks, because uh, he was going to go to Army Ranger Boot Camp. Or he, he was going into, like, he was getting uh, the, the weird test that you have to do before being selected to be a Ranger, right? And I'm just like, awesome, man, like, a lot of people can't do that. You know, thanks for going in and doing that, and I'm wishing you the best. And that's how the interaction just goes. <laughs> like, dude, just legendary. I couldn't be a fucking army ranger. I couldn't do that. I don't have the ability to. Okay, fu- so I talked to, like, six people off the chain of command. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to be here today. Okay, we'll get it up. We'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out. And they never do. I'm not there that day. The next day I show up for work. You weren't here yesterday. Yeah, I said I was going to be gone. Well, uh, we have to let you go. <laughs> and that oh was that. Oh, my God. Fox, cool, great. Awful. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Thanks for absolutely fucking nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's That makes me angry. I've told you about a lot of terrible jobs that I've had. Mm-hmm. From cheese recycler, yep. cheese recycler. injection molder. Mm-hmm. I know injection uh, molder, There I was think. another job where I assembled mirrors. Uh-huh. So I was working in a factory, and we were assembling rear view mirrors. That's neat. Ah, uh, yes. For vehicles. And they told me, uh, yeah, by the way, uh, before you leave every day, look at this giant screen that has all of the Aww. shifts on it because if you're scheduled for overtime we're not going to tell you it's just going to be on that board gross he's gonna be every day i came it? in one day and they said hey you were scheduled for uh, an extra four hours yesterday and you didn't show up four hours early and i said oh sorry i'm still you know new here i i didn't know i got fired nice of course of course of course oh why? but he would have had to give two weeks why wouldn't they no you you didn't show up they liked me so much, they promoted me, and then I made a simple mistake, and they fired me. Yeah. Probationary. Yeah, Melbourne, absolutely. Something. Yeah, they're amazing and wonderful. And Fuck then there that. was the time I worked for the furniture assembly factory. I don't... I didn't know about this. Oh, yes. I was assembling tables. Table. Oh, I do know about this job, because I know what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, no. I worked at that job for a month. At the end of every shift, we have to clean the machine. Yes. At the end of one day, the machine was still running when I went to clean it out, and it chunked off a part of my Ooh. thing. That was the day I learned about 
avulsions, uh-huh. which is different from amputations, uh-huh. because amputation implies precision. Oh, no. When your finger gets ripped apart, that's called an avulsion. Yeah. Why is it so no. Yeah, Ugh. I remember you sending me pictures of your finger. I still have those pictures saved. Yeah, Amazing. Fucked up. Fucked. Yeah. I got a worksite injury. No. Oh, no. Do you think you need an ambulance? And I'm sitting there on the ground covered in blood because my finger just got ripped apart. Probably, yeah. Yes? Yes, question mark? I don't know. You want me to make the decision? I'm basically in shock right now. Uh, yes, get me to the hospital. That manager had better get fucking fired. Like, straight up. Because they're supposed... As someone with experience as management, as someone that went to, a, uh, went to a recent company, like, not saying which one it is, whether it was my last job, last, last job before that, etc., right? Like, as someone that has taken manager tests literally passed with flying fucking colors when people have noted that yeah this shit's hard right you know while i don't have the hours behind my belt as a quote-unquote manager right i clearly feel like i know what i'm fucking doing in certain aspects at least i can cite that right i can put that on my fucking resume um no you should be knowing what the fuck to do if someone if, if you're working the floor and somebody get if somebody's on fire right you better fucking know where that extinguisher is you better know where the emergency numbers are that's just basic right i mean there are things that i say and there are things that i have said which it would be controversial right where a ceo should know every part of their company absolutely everything fully you know and, and people have told me kip that's not how that works that's not realistic and you know those points i do have to concede because you know to a degree it's not realistic i'm just a we- i'm a weird case where I do all the content creation myself. Don't get me wrong. I have my mods, Kiwi, Doc, Utaka, etc. You know, they do a lot, of, if not all the modding duties, right? And th- I thank everyone of the, like, holy fuck, I could not do this without you guys helping monitor and stuff. Like, in terms of my own thumbnails, in terms of videos, in terms of cutting up these VODs, right? Like, once again, like, I bring you my, uh, saved my documents for some reason. But, like, this, this is, this is literally what I've been doing all day. Like, going between laying in bed and doing this, right? Like, I do everything myself, which, you know, colors my perception in a certain way, right? But if you're a manager of a firm and, like, someone gets an avulsion on their finger and, like, you're asking, do I need... Do you want an ambulance? Like, the answer is... You... you One, assess their condition. Are they coherent or not? Clearly, he's not coherent enough. Cool. Get that fucking ambulance. Make sure your shit's covered. Make sure the company's covered at that point. Like, oh my god, if this manager doesn't get fired, I'm gonna have an aneurysm. Ambulance, sure. I mean, looking back on it, it's not life threatening. You could just take me there in a yeah. car. But you could yeah. lose a nut left blood. Uh, you asked me if I need an ambulance, sure, give me an ambulance. Yeah, five grand, know, but it's the company's this. dime. It happened at the workplace. I don't know how bad it's gonna be. I don't know if my life is gonna be permanently altered. Workman's from that comp point is a thing that yeah, needs to be going into this. You basically just had two fingers sawn down yeah. on your dominant hand. Yeah, yeah. that's You don't big. expect to look down and see part of your hand missing. No, it's, it's, yeah. It's shocking. A little bit. They took me to the hospital. They checked me out. Said, there's not much we can do. We'll bandage it. We'll change the bandages every day. And hope for the best. Right. Now, they, they did what they could. There wasn't much they could do. Right. But after that, the company really didn't want to Because he was a liability. Around. So they started framing me uh-huh. for safety violations they walk past a, a conveyor belt and say hey that safety isn't on and it, it's like i'm not the only one who uses this right conveyor yeah. Belt. yeah they were trying like to find a five reason five other people use this conveyor belt i engage the safety brake every time but i can't ensure it stays locked because other people use it this happened a couple times they noticed a safety Thank violation they told me that it was my fault they made me sign a piece of paper but that was the fourth safety violation they'd written me up for, so they had total cause to let me go and, and deny, deny unemployment, unemployment. That's the big because one. it's all my fault. But now his because fingers you fucked had up. Safety violations. If I had just not signed these pieces of paper, yep. I would have had a better chance of getting unemployment. You probably would have gotten fired, but you, you would have been able to collect unemployment, and they probably would have been held fired accountable you without cause. Yep. The society we live in is so screwed up that even though I've had about forty jobs at this point. I think I've collected unemployment maybe once Yeah, I, ha- I haven't even life. collected yeah. unemployment at all. I know they make you fill out paperwork. I've done leave of absence, show proof that you but I, I haven't done it. No, I've done unemployment. It is such a hassle. It is the biggest hassle because when I was on unemployment, I, was denied unemployment I had to prove that I had when applied I needed for it. eight jobs a week. And then I had, to go to, I had to go to things where it's like, here's how you use the internet. Bro, to they're so unhelpful too. And it's like a six-hour course. It's so stupid. How do you use the internet to apply for a job? 
I know how to fucking do this. I know how to look for jobs. There's none available right now. Actual fucking facts sometimes. Like, sometimes there just isn't shit available. And even then, right? Like, I've had to have this conversation with people that are, like, you know, in the 50s to 60 age bracket, right? We're like, well, nobody wants to work, and oh, we'll just go put out job apps. It's like, okay. But just because Starbucks says they're hiring doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to hire people. And they just can't understand that. Because factually, Starbucks has done that, right? Like, I think we can say this without fact. We don't have to put an allegedly in there, right? Where they have... You can go down, you can see a now hiring sign, but they factually just don't... Hi- there, there's a reason they do it. I can't remember why they do it and why other companies do it. Like, it just... This it's just the bit. I think it's a big disconnect between some of the older generations and some of the newer generations. Yes, don't get me wrong. There's there is totally the archetype of person that wants to uh, smoke pot and eat cheese its all day and play WoW for sixteen hours a day and go to sleep for five hours. Right? You know, I used to play L five R with with one of these people. We call him Cheeto. <laughs> I haven't seen that dude. Apparently, he's like four hundred pounds now. <laughs> but once again, not this is just a specific type of person, right? Like. There's there's different types of people, right? It's, I don't know, I, anyways, by the time you're 25. No, I don't own a house by the time I'm 25. You know what I also don't have? I also don't have a drug addiction. I also don't have alcoholism, I, even though my family is prone to alcoholism genetically. I don't have a kid. I don't have a, uh, a spouse or significant other that I, that I genuinely hate. I'm not in an abusive situation anymore. I think I'm doing pretty well being completely fucking honest in 2023. I'm still alive, which tiring at times i'm still alive and continuing to do stream things and <laughs> thank you all for coming out uh academic probation for gpn they require me to take a course like that where some uh notes like where that's too I, I, I can't understand that shit is the thing it's like you, this is how you do and I, i've genuinely gone to like videos and stuff like this where it's like this is how you do something motherfucker i'm literally doing this what are you talking about i am literally applying for these jobs i am literally doing these things if nothing no one's gonna reciprocate it's not going to happen. I literally had someone halfway across the state ask me for a job. And they're like, oh, we saw your resume. You want to do this? I'm like, cool, yeah, I can come in. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's in this town, this specific town halfway across the fucking state. And I'm like, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? Mate, did you not see that I'm in this town halfway across the state? They never got back to me on that. Um, I had another, I had a couple other people. I, I had someone be like, hey, we want to, uh, we want to, uh, interview you. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, yeah, what time are we doing this? And they never get back to me. I... <laughs> uh, that I'll get unsolicited links from quote-unquote HR people. And it's like, oh, I'll click on this link. I'm like, oh, that's... I, 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 worked at a, I worked at a financial institution. I know what phishing looks like. <laughs> Just like, oh, man. But, you know, I could be doing worse. Yes, crippling cardboard addiction, you know, st- gaming addictions on Steam and stuff like that. Yes, you know, could I be spending less on Steam? Probably. But you know what? I don't have... I feel like I haven't fucked up too bad, if that makes sense. Like, I don't have a kid that I can't afford. I'm not in a shitty situation. I, I have somewhat of a plan, even though technically I really can't plan three months out plus. I can't even plan two weeks out plus at this point. 2023 just beating my ass like that NyQuil. <laughs> Nobody is fucking hiring. Unless I want to get a job working at Walmart, getting paid $3 an hour. Yeah, yeah some bullshit like that. Some fucking shit thing. And then it's like, oh, God, I'm anyway, kidding. I'm getting off topic. There was one job I worked for, the plastic injection molding facility. I didn't like that I job. hear the oven rooms in these are paycheck. gross. It was flexible. I stayed with like, it. Like, they're awful. It was third shift, which sucked. But the supervisor was a fellow Marine, a great guy. I did Toys for Tots charity work with right. him. Right. I liked him. He asked and that's me- a good point. Like, I, there is a point when it becomes addiction, right? My addiction to quote Destiny when Lightfall came out, right? Around the time, end of season of Seraph, right? When I was on leave. Okay, yeah, pretty addiction level, let's put it that way. <laughs> and, like, me back in 2013 getting paid $300 uh, ever, uh, a week, right, roughly, and spending 200 of it on Yu-Gi-Oh! for, like, Necroz and shit, right? Okay, maybe not the best decision, Kip. Like, there's a point where it becomes, like, an addiction, it becomes impactful to your bills and stuff, but generally, like, bro, I'm here for a good time at this point, not a long time. I'm just doing my best. <laughs> me to stay with the company a little longer i said okay i'll do it for you i do plan plan on leaving soon but at your request i will stay here for a few more months and then he got let go because he wasn't meeting the quota or something that the company wanted Uh and when they did that 
I put in my two week notice because I was only there at his request. Right, that's fair. But there were a couple other people that just quit outright. And yeah. I kind of wish I was with them. Yeah. Yeah. Like they blamed him for not being able to retain somebody <laughs> on third shift at this stupid factory that doesn't pay well. Yeah, enough. You legitimately didn't get paid enough to fix your car. Fact. And you would ride your bike to work, and there were times oh, where your bike broke. I forgot about that. And you, had to, you had to call me on a payphone to come pick you up. Awful. I remember, yeah, this job that I worked at was a 10-minute drive away from where I lived. It was so convenient. 10 minutes of driving away. But when you're driving a car. But at one point, my vehicle broke down. I didn't have the money to fix it. So I would bike to work and bike back. My 10-minute drive became a 60-minute bike ride. Awful. Yeah. But there were a couple times where my bike broke or yep. got a flat or something. You still got to get to work. So I would walk. There was one time I was walking back, and I had my thumb out. I was hitchhiking on my way back home. Wow. God. One time That's I spooky. actually had somebody stop by and uh, let me ride with him. I asked him what his name was. I think his name was Wrench. I think Wrench. he called himself. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> He was just covered in piercings and tattoos. Like, I love this yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I used to hitchhike before. I know how it is. It's all good. And there's some Damn, pe legit man. people, yeah. but there's also not legit when people when you hitchhike. Like, I picked yeah. up hitchhikers once. I was driving somewhere, and there were two very attractive women Don't do sitting it. on the side Don't of the road. Don't do it. All right. Don't do and, it. And uh, they had a sign like going to like going Don't do to it. Richmond or whatever. This seems like a scam. Oh, it's gonna go uh, south. They're from Germany, and they're like, "Yeah, we need a we need a ride to we get need the, the ride to, to get the here, here. Or wherever." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, okay, yeah, I can give you a ride." So they come towards the car, and then four yep. dudes, yep. come with them. <laughs> the guys were sitting just out of yep. sight by a park bench. Yep, that's a hot. And yep. they were using yep. the women as bait to lose. Don't, don't like as some like as someone that's been binging true crime and stuff right these these highway mannings do fucking exist like and this is why unfortunately it's like hitchhikers do get a bad rep right sometimes you'll find someone that's super legit and just needs a ride somewhere sometimes you'll find people like this trying to prey on people just trust just be very careful is all i can say like obviously every situation is different it's just Right, and and it's, but you and YouTubing is a job though. So I, I went to SCA last night. Well, I went to SCA dinner because we got rained out, right? And I went to dinner, and I told one of the, uh, the my buddy, I'm like, yeah, no, I already made like two grand or something in the past 28 days. And he just looks at me. He's just this is teacher friend actually, and then he's just like, man, I'm in the wrong line of work. And then I was just like, but there's certain things you have to. I, I mean, I'm doing like double daily content. Used to do triple, but have since backed off because full time job again, right? Um, yeah, no, it's just it, it, look. If we look at it objectively, is working at a factory for 60 hours a week not selling your body for money, if we're going to get pedantic about this, is that not different, and I'm walking into this one, is that not different than selling feet pics on OnlyFans? Both of these are selling your body and getting money. Just, that's all you have to do to defuse that argument and watch people get pissed. <laughs> Unsuspecting men into giving them a ride somewhere. So I had. Six uh, I guess Germans these were like legit people then. My car. <laughs> I love it. I thought that story was going to take a different turn. Like you were going to get mugged there. They actually wanted to ride. Fair no, enough. They actually wanted to ride, but they were they were like, yeah, people won't stop if it's four guys. guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> keep driving. Yep. Just keep going. That's a good story. People when I, when will want over, to stop like, you. Yeah, we need. We need. Do you have room for six people in your car? And I was like, Yeah, I do. And oh, you got four lady friends hiding those bushes Ooh, over oh there. Boy, this will be fun. One of the guys puts on some leggings and a high heel, sticks his leg out from the bush. The legend. <laughs> legend. Yeah, I got some friends over there. All right. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, they fucking conned me. It was fine, though. Yeah. Was, good lie. As long as everyone's having fun, that's all It's that a con is. that everyone can enjoy. I, I tried my really bad German at them, and they... they, they Hit him, gotcha! funny. <laughs> das ist ein moron. Das <laughs> <laughs> My Deutsches Mittelmassig. Uh, oh, oh, oh. And they, they thought that was really funny because they're like, how do you, how can you say your German? You know the word for mediocre. <laughs> yeah, how can you say your German is mediocre? <laughs> Can't say the legend. Else. Oh, wait, I can say, uh, ich habe Käse in meinen Hosen. I have cheese in my pants. Amazing. <laughs> Bro. And then they taught you how to say, don't shoot, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was a wild one. Holy fuck, I love that. Absolutely.
Like, oh my god, that was... That was amazing. No, I'll have to watch more true crime content on Kip soon. Like, oh god. That, I, I can go for hours on that shit, but I have to pace myself. That was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Mike, Mike Burnfire, absolutely amazing. Thank you for that.